I'm Judith Lewis, and welcome to The SERP Show. I'm joined by Julia Logan, and today we are talking about medical terms in search. Absolutely. It's so. an interesting SERP that we've been looking at. So, um, Irish, you've got it on your screen. Yes. Let me share my screen. We've been having a poke around because, of course, right now, as we're coming out on the other side of a time of increased medical interest, we thought that we would take a look at some of the medical results outside of what's happening right now to see with a SERP that is different, what might it be like when it's not COVID related? So here we have one that Julia picked and take it away, Julia. Right. So we decided to look for something called Helicobacter pylori, which is apparently a bacteria that has been discovered only in the last few decades. And that is apparently responsible for stomach ulcers and even cancer that people might be getting. And basically, that's, that's a really interesting one. Basically, a lot of the Earth's population have it, and they might not have any symptoms. They might not even know, but it's quite widespread. But you would never suspect until you get tested. So, uh, if we kind look at like the Kind of like COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not always asymptomatic, but so is Helicobacter pylori, also known as H. pylori. So, yeah, uh, let's look at the serbs then. So, basically, when we search, and I remind you that we are on a UK IP and in a private window, so our previous history does not have anything to do with what we are seeing. This mm -hmm. is as unbiased as we could get. So basically, um, if we look at these SERPs, one prominent piece of content here is this knowledge graph card, apparently. And of course, it comes from the Wikipedia. And for those of you who are really interested what this bacteria is, I advise you to at least have a look at this, this article or any other source. That It's quite interesting. It's, it's quite scary too, but it's quite interesting. So yeah. But apart from, from the knowledge graph card, which uh, I think absolutely deserves to be here because this is like uh, an actual uh, entity that people are searching for. And this is an informational query mm. kind of thing. So yeah, also what we've got here is quite interesting as well. And I will, I will even refresh it so that we could see it in its initial state. Oh, We have very prominent people also ask section, but it's not number one, it's number two for me. Number one, however, is Mayo Clinic, which for the UK SERPs is kind of, I mean, yeah, it's it's a great information source, but it's it's a U.S. site, so maybe not particularly relevant for the U.K. Serbs. Absolutely, and I think um, Mayo Clinic and its um, child below it, um, Healthline, are both much more oriented towards a U.S. audience. And if you try to look at Healthline without giving it any of your information, you actually can't see anything. Hmm, that's interesting. Also, another interesting bit that we have here is the ad. Which has we disappeared, have, of course. <laughs> we, we don't have it. We used to have an ad yes. for something called, oh, it's because we clicked through, I think. Ah, yes. So we've already visited. So, so we yeah, had. We can show you the actual site later on. Yeah, so basically, so, Guts Charity, that's mm. the only site that has an ad here. And could you could you add some comments about the ads in these serves, Judith? Yeah, I've worked in pharmaceuticals before. And one of the things about PPC ads is that there are a lot of restrictions on what you're allowed to do with PPC ads. And for some, a lot of pharmaceuticals, you're actually not allowed to advertise pharmaceuticals in the UK. So you are in the US, but you're not in the UK. And there's a lot of regulation around it. There are so many restrictions on what you're allowed to say and caveats that you must include in your ad copy. So if you are advertising on something like Heliobacter, Heliobacter pylori, 
<laughs> Helicobacter pylori, um, and you're a drug, there are so many extra bits you have to have in the advert in order just to comply. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and in the UK, there's more than we could actually fit in there. So we're actually not allowed in the UK to advertise medicines, pharmaceutical mm -hmm. medicines in the UK search results. I've done it in the US. It's a pain and we have to jump through a lot of hoops, but you just won't see actual pharmaceutical drugs advertised in the search results the way you will in the US in the UK because of the legal restrictions as well as advertising restrictions on um, ads, which is why I was so surprised to see something yeah. advertised against this. But apparently what it is, is a charity, God's UK, godscharity.org.uk, and this is a charity dealing with all sorts of uh, digestive diseases, they say. So we suspected that it might be uh, related to, to Google in some way, like this charity could be getting some, some Google funding or something, and because of that, they are perhaps allowed to advertise. But we don't know for sure, so we're not, we're not stating this as a fact. Yeah, we're so not sure if they're Google grants, but they are advertising on this because they're relevant. Mm -hmm. And basically, if we go to SpyFu and look at the history of the ads appearing for the search term, SpyFu is a really handy tool if you want to research the history of the SERPs, including the PPC ads included in those SERPs. Mm. So for the UK, if you type in Helicobacter pylori and go to advertiser history, here it will show you all the domains that have ever had ads for this keyword. And apparently, historically, there was a bunch, including even eBay and Amazon and a bunch of others ask about. Of course. Yeah, about .com, that's, that's a really, really old site that is not even around anymore. As of now, as we can see, starting from March, there's only one ad in this entire SERP, and this is this God's charity. But if we go back, okay, there was another version of that ad back in December. They, they even tracked different versions of the ads. Uh, if we go still back, look, no ads, no ads whatsoever. Yeah. No ads, no ads in 2019. Yeah, no possibly related to this pharmaceutical thing because what mm -hmm. else would you advertise yeah. against a particular disease? But only only in March 2017, we have ads for something called alsocure.com mm. and verisana.co.uk. And even before that, not much more. Yeah. Two ads for two other sites, but apparently for a long time they have been, okay, these guys have been testing different versions of the ads, but that's about it. And also a site called there Ulcer Cure, ages. Yeah. You, can, you can tell why they're advertising mm -hmm. there, possibly, but also the regulations probably pushed them out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is really interesting. Now, what else is really interesting about the SERP is if you scroll down to the image section, they have a bunch of images displaying this wonderful bacteria. Isn't I this lovely? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't call it wonderful. It looks like an alien. Yeah, and imagine this living in people's stomachs. Ugh. Yeah, but also what's quite interesting here, let me make it bigger. Uh, is this uh, clarification of the image search. This is very interesting. I mean, you may have seen this before in the actual image search like this. Mm. This is not new. This has been around for a while. But to have something like this directly in the universal SERP, that's, I think that's a first for me. Absolutely. And I haven't call, heard it called a universal SERP for such a long time. Oof, nostalgia. <laughs> hey, what else do you call it? I mean, it's, it's a SERP that includes like everything. Yep. 
I remember when they were first images, and I mean, in case of I'm jumping ahead of myself, but in case of Bing, it yep. includes a news section. Exactly. So what is it if not universal serves? Exactly. No, it is, but it's been yeah. so long since anyone's called them that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, anyways, anyways, people also ask. I think it totally belongs here because I yeah. mean, how else do you clarify all the questions that you might have about the topic? Yeah, And the answers, interestingly, come from Mayo Clinic, they come from WebMD, they come from all sorts of sites, but not from Wikipedia. Basically, apart from this knowledge graph card, you can't see Wikipedia anywhere on the entire first page of the SERPs. Yeah, they seem to have been you banished. You have WebMD, you have Kids Health, you have a bunch of other sites, but not Wikipedia. Mm. Where is Wikipedia? Turns out it's on page two, but I'll show this to you later. Anyway, anyway, we decided to compare, and I mean, this is pretty interesting too. If you are researching all the various bacteria living in human bodies, yeah, that perhaps these are really, really interesting related searches. Absolutely. And then three cellular. Uh, Organisms, examples. Because this is the classification that it yeah, lives within. Yeah. So this is a bit of scientific stuff when it comes to, because basically this is the scientific term for these bacteria. So, yeah. Mm. So, right. So we decided to compare these serps to the ones in Bing. And here's what we see. So there is this, <laughs> there is this knowledge pain also coming from Wikipedia, of course, but Wikipedia is a lot more prominent in Bing than it is in Google. Mm. Interesting. Wikipedia here is number three, is it? Yeah, and two, it's got a really three, rich result. Section three, yes. Yeah. So quite interesting. But also what we see here is Bing does not have as many limitations on the ads. And you get ridiculous ads like fantastic prices on Helicobacter pylori on eBay. Well, if it's a fantastic price, I'm in. Yep. Let's go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget that you might not be able to rid of this bacteria for life. Yeah. <laughs> well, there is free shipping, though. I mean, it's really tempting. Yeah, free shipping. Yeah, nice. So basically, this is the kind of ridiculous situation that you might get into if you do not really filter what your ads are running for. Exactly, yeah. Somebody's been a little lazy on Bing compared to Google. It's not about Bing, it's about eBay. I mean, why are they even advertising for all the random terms like Helicobacter pylori? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the ad. It's the media managers being lazy. Yeah. Not Bing, it's media managers. Yeah, so. Bing has its policies, so yeah, they allow people to advertise for a term like this. It's up to them, but it's then up to the people advertising to filter out stuff that they might not actually want their ads to show for. Exactly. And we have mentioned this before in the other episodes as well, but yep. here we go again. Can't yeah. mention this enough. People just don't learn... Yeah, so quite interesting here is the news section, which mm. has the latest news stories about Helicobacter pylori. And I guess, given the informational uh, nature of this query, what if somebody is researching and really interested to know what's the latest news about? I mean, that saves you a click to the news section. Yeah. Right? So that's, that's handy in this case, I suppose. They also have uh, quite a nice uh, people also ask section as well. Mm -hmm. Like, and it, it, including how did I get? Because that must how did be. I get? Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Because in most cases, people just discover that they have it and they have no idea. Yeah. All of a so, sudden, yeah. they just realize they have it. One of the interesting things that we didn't see on Google that we do see here on Bing is patient.info, which is in the UK, the way that your um, doctors might be linked up to a central system. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody with a doctor who is set up with um, the ability to make appointments online and similar things 
is um, gets access to patient.info. And you can see also that Bing is showing the author. Great. So talk about your medic update, talk about your EAT, talk about your money or your life. Clearly yeah. a life-threatening kind of search. Yeah. yeah. And there you go. Bing actually does what Google declares. <laughs> <laughs> Bing so is doing a better job. Yeah. Sorry, Google. But yeah, <laughs> um, because Google is too heavy on the U.S. search results in the U.K. right now. Um, yeah. It looks almost like a hand job where they've they've whitelisted a bunch of medical um, yeah. sites. And Probably as a result, somebody based in the, U in the U.S. has done it. Yeah. With yeah. little regard to the specificity yeah. of the Serbs in other countries. And yeah. People might expect to see there, and this is not typical of just this one medical query. We have also looked at flu treatment, another very interesting SERP, also a medical query, more general perhaps, and probably more lenient towards ad placement. Because, because we've, here, we've gone with treatment. Yeah. And here we have Dan Night Nurse, which totally deserves to be here because this is treatment for flu. Absolutely. And it's an over-the-counter. So it's not a pharmaceutical per se. It's sold over-the-counter. You can, you can buy it in the supermarket, in the pharmacy section of your supermarket. It does not require a prescription. So it's not subject to the same kind of regulations mm -hmm. that um, actual prescription pharmaceuticals are in the UK, which is part of the reason why you can't advertise pharmaceuticals here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. One other bit that uh, just jumps in your face is this very, very interesting layout of this. I'm not even sure if this is the knowledge graph card or if that has some, some other name. So basically, it has three tabs. And Judith was showing me earlier that in her case, she gets even four tabs. Which is the fourth? Um, I've closed my laptop. <laughs> I don't just get four tabs. I also get the um, a second line. So mm -hmm. I'm also getting a second table of results in my in my search results. But I went to google.com in Google's defense and I went to look at it um, and it didn't know where I was. So I've got overview symptoms treatment specialists because specialists. evidently there are specialists for um, flu. And then mm -hmm. I get under treatments, I have a second row and it says all supportive care, self-care mm -hmm. and medication. Right. Okay. So you're missing that. And then the specialists, I've got pediatricians or primary care providers. Mm -hmm. um, and this is mainly from Mayo Clinic. So again, we're looking at primarily U.S. search results. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the overview, I actually get an image. So what you've got there, um, you don't have the image I'm getting through from, mm -hmm. um, I assume, the CDC or the Mayo Clinic. And then I have um, a, a much richer result. But I like this because it's pulling from the NHS. Yeah. This is more relevant to a UK searcher. Yeah. So this is from the NHS and this is from the NHS and this is also from the NHS. Yeah. So yeah, at least that is great for the UK Serbs. Yeah, but, unlike the rest. <laughs> but as for as for the Serbs themselves, they are quite interesting. So we've got an ad, then we've got this featured snippet from Mayo Clinic, which is again a US site. Yeah. And there is this feature snippet with the text coming from Mayo Clinic, but the images coming from elsewhere. Yeah. And they are, would you say they are particularly relevant to this? I don't know. Well, they are okay, images flu, that... Yes. Okay. That, that's an image about treating flu, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. basically, what, what's interesting here is it makes you believe that you can scroll and see more images, but you can't really... And Psych. view all just takes you to the image search. Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting. So, people also ask, which I believe is pretty typical for these kind of queries. Yeah. Because, yeah, it totally makes sense to have it here. Mm. Then we have the NHS. Then we which have CDC, which is the American site. It makes no sense. 
WebMD, we were arguing previously that probably it does partially deserve to be here because Boots yes. is uh, quoting them and, and provides information from them. So perhaps yeah. this is at least familiar to the UK searcher and at least somehow is relevant. Now, VIX totally deserves to be here because Absolutely. this is treatment. Mm. NHS Scott because I'm on a Glasgow IP, so yes. Yep. I find it odd that they have it under infections and poisoning. I never thought it flew that way, but okay, Scotland, you do you. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. Then, then there's what? A bunch, there's a bunch of really, really, really sketchy sites like medicalnewstoday.com articles. Yeah, weird. Yeah, Healthline twice. It's really low quality. Really not good. Yeah. Not for the UK. I think Google yeah. in this case is really doing a bad job. Yeah, and basically, if we look at the ranking history in the UK for the, for both of these terms that we looked at, Helicobacter pylori, it was dominated by Mayo Clinic, Healthline, and NHS for a long while for the entire last year. Yeah, they were somewhere present here in the top ten. Three yeah. of these sites. Changing positions, probably jumping over some others. But right now, they are the top three results, excluding the people also ask, which uh, Systrix in this case somehow sees as the, 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 the top result apart mm. from uh, these. Uh, we see it number two, but they see it as number one. Okay, there might be differences depending on the IP. So, yeah, yeah. this is a possible variation. And where did, I mean, this is the changes over the last month. So what was uh, happening over the last month? Wikipedia used to be on the first page, number eight. But then it went over to the second page, number 12. So now all we see on the first page is just the features, uh, not the feature snippet, but the uh, knowledge graph pane. That's it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. As for flu treatment, the situation is kind of similar. It's for the last six months at least, it's dominated by the NHS, which deserves to be here. Okay, these are the UK SERPs, but also CDC and WebMD. And the CDC makes no sense for the UK. It really yeah. is not, it should not be showing for the UK. Yeah. And I get Google and it has... wasn't. It wasn't until very recently. It wasn't yeah. until the beginning of this year. It yeah. wasn't on the first page. Okay, it was at the bottom of the first page. Yeah. But yeah, then they suddenly jumped into the very, very top. So this is interesting. It smacks of a hand job where yeah. they've done a whitelist. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like something that we've uh, spoken about uh, when we were discussing the payday loan SERP and talking about that long ago history of the UK Parliament site ranking for payday loans. Yeah. So, yeah, watch that episode if you haven't yet. But Judith has a question to you. If mm. you were to, to rank UK sites here in place of everything that's ranking for flu treatment currently, what would you have here? Well, apparently NHS because it deserves to be there, but what yeah. else? I think the NHS absolutely deserves to be there. But one of the mm -hmm. things that's missing is Boots, Boots mm -hmm. the chemist. They mm -hmm. will sell um, cold and flu remedies. I yeah. love the fact and that... if somebody is looking for flu treatment, I mean, come on, this is pretty transactional. Yeah, yeah. Boots, Lloyd's the uh, the chemist, uh, Boots the chemist, Lloyd's pharmacy. Um, I would expect to also get things like um, VIX, definitely. Because Vicks mm -hmm. Vapor Rub, everybody knows that. Lemsip, yeah, though. This year? Yeah, Lemsip. Lemsip there's, is nowhere. And I would expect to see Lemsip on this SERP. I don't understand why Lemsip's not there. Um, Interesting fact about Lemsip. Uh, they only sell Lemsip with mints, which is a much more pleasant flavor. And much more efficient for fighting the congestion in your nose mm. of in Ireland. They don't have that in the UK. Sadly. So weird. They um, used also, to, but no more. Yeah, it's it's really, and I I love Neo Citron, but it's not allowed to be sold in the UK. 
So <laughs> go figure. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm addicted to drugs that are not allowed for the UK, clearly. <laughs> well, to treat my flu. Um, speaking of which, um, you know, neocitrin's not there because it can't be. But benalin, which is used for chesty coughs or dry coughs or tickly coughs, mm -hmm. that's something that you get with the flu and that's not there. So we're not getting pharmacies, which makes no sense here. And we're not getting actual treatments like Lemsip and um, Benelin and Vicks and Day and Night Nurse. Although we do have Day and Night Nurse, thankfully, in the PPC okay. results, it's really, it makes no sense for the UK. This just doesn't make sense. If I'm looking for a flu treatment, I don't want to go to Healthline and read up on home remedies necessarily, because that's not what I've typed. I've typed in flu treatments, not flu home remedies doesn't make sense and this is all about eat expertise expertise authoritativeness and trustworthiness and right. all that's happened is there's been a hand job somewhere probably we're not sure but it looks yeah. like there's been a hand job somewhere certain sites have gotten boosted it looks like healthline was one of the ones boosted but i hate it because i have to allow it to place tracking cookies on my machine in order to read the articles and and i'm not willing to do that right Okay, so and that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. And keep in mind that whatever they tell you about EIT or medic updates or stuff like that, you're still better off checking your particular SERP to see what's actually ranking and how you can beat it in the SERPs and how you can be more efficient and how you can be more useful to your potential visitors. Yeah, it's like the old days of update Vince. You've got to recognize that Google seems to have picked some brands yeah. and see how you can unseat them because clearly different brands deserve to be there, at least in the UK SERPs. So we hope you enjoyed this episode and until the next time. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe.